friendly spearmint chewing gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Ash with Alan Reed as Pasquale. friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's entertainment. Usually, we find Luigi writing a letter to his mother, but now we find him reading one from his mother in Italy. Dear son Luigi, I thought maybe you'd like to know what's to happen when your letter comes from America to me. Well, first of all, Martucci, the mailman, is collecting United States stamps. So when he's giving me your letter, every week the envelope is come naked. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I'm not letting me take off the stamps. Because I know the reason you paste so many on is because you like to see your mom's name between a Washington and a Lincoln. <laughs> By the time I'm open the envelope, all the family and all the relatives is in the house. And Uncle Pietro is standing on the dining room table acting out to you letter. Remember, Luigi, when you was having a trouble with a guest company? How we was a suffer for you. Even Uncle Pietro's a goat. He's a feeling so bad, he's a no give a milk for three days. <laughs> and remember that letter you wrote to how you was lonely? Oh, Luigi, you made us feel so lonely, nobody is to leave the house for 24 hours. <laughs> But lately, Luigi, we can see what is your biggest problem. Pasquale is a fat daughter Rosa. <laughs> and every time I'm read about her, I'm a get the headaches. <laughs> Last night, we was all talking about you and Rosa, and we all decide good the way to like Rosa is to forget that she's away 250 pounds. <laughs> Make her believe that she's only 200. We think Rosa could be a good wife for you because, like Uncle Pietro is always a say, you plow the field the quicker when you got a bigger ox. <laughs> <laughs> but now, Luigi, I'm going to stop and my headache is coming back. So good night to my son. Keep her healthy. Take care of yourself. And anybody else, you have to. You're loving the mama. Ah, poor mamma mia. What am I going to do for her? If only some little voice was a come and a whisper in my ear is some other voice. Luigi, mamma. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Didn't know I was ahead, did you? Uh, peek a boop. Hello, Pasquale, you were reading the letter behind my back. You were lying. It's impossible to read it behind your back. I was looking over your shoulder. <laughs> Mom is not feeling it so well, eh, Luigi? Yeah, and, and I'm very worried. Well, I can't blame you, my little banana nose. <laughs> After all, the fellas only got a one mama. Those headaches, they're bad for her. Especially if they're not a headaches, if they're really a heartaches. Heartaches? Uh, Pasquale, what are you talking about? Luigi, it's obvious. According to professors, the pain never shows up where it's supposed to. Instead, it comes a sneaking around the back way and pops up for someplace else, like a motorcycle a cop. But, <laughs> Squatter, you mean my mom has got a headache because she's a bothered by a motorcycle a cop? Oh, what a stupid boob. Come here, come here, sit down, sit down. I, I gotta explain to you. I explain to you like I explain to you how to play Kanatsa. Sit down. <laughs> you, mama. 
is you got a big heartache, Luigi, and that's pushing the pain up the stairs into her head. <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, why should my mama have a heartache? Are you going to play hard down the stairs, eh? All right, I'll give you a plane. Heartaches happens to all the grandmamas who ain't the grandmamas because their sons was too lazy to get them married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you think my mama's got a headache because she ain't the grandmama? I don't think, I know. My own skull almost cracks every time I look at a Rosa. After all, she's just like you, still a bachelor. <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, your skull ain't my mama's skull. Luigi, there's no doubts about it. Just figure it out for yourself. What's the biggest ambition a woman can have? To get her married. Right. And why does she want to get her married? So she's going to stop her working. Luigi. <laughs> that's only in the old country. In America, a woman gets married, she still keeps on working. <laughs> Luigi, a woman gets married because she wants to become a mom. So she finds a husband has a few bambini. The bambini grow up and they get married. And her mama has a new ambition. Oh, she wants to become a grandmama? Right. And how can she do this? If her son gets married. Luigi, I accept your proposal. No, no. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Lucky pups, you. <laughs> now, if you excuse me, Luigi, I gotta make a three important phone calls. Three? Yeah, one to the florist for a bridal bouquet, and one to the printer to print up the wedding invitations, and one to the church to keep open this Sunday. Ah, oh, that's, that's a nice. Uh, and I make a fourth to call a Pasquale. Sure, Luigi, to who? To the airfield. I'm leaving for Mexico. <laughs> Don't be smart, Luigi. You want your mama to keep on having the headaches. Is that how you pay back to the little old lady who's wasted her whole life for growing you up? But Pasquale, I'm gonna think that she's got the headaches for me. What then? From me? Luigi, look at this letter again. What do you read between the lines? Nothing. The mama is always a push of the words closer together. <laughs> oh, Luigi, don't play dumbbell. Just look at the letter. Like Uncle Pietro says, you plow the field quicker when you got a big ox. That ain't no advertisement for a bulldozer. Professor <laughs> you don't mind that they call Rosa big ox? I don't care what they call her, as long as you marry her. <laughs> Nothing, Dona Pasquale. I'm more rather she be your big ox than my big ox. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wise Guy. See, I got to get a tougher with you and you, Mama Mia. What are you talking about, Pasquale? I'm talking about a plenty. Wait and see. But, but wait, Pasquale, wait. Sick and tired of fooling around. Rosa! 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 <laughs> hey, put down that turkey leg. And grab a pencil and a paper. All right. And stop eating. I'm not eating. I'm nibbling. Nibbling? Your nibbles could have feed a family of ten. <laughs> now write this letter to Luigi's mama. Dear mom. No, 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 wait. Uh, make that a dear Mrs. Basco. Mrs. Basco? Yeah, that's uh, like in a business letter. She should have known I'm in a business. Now, just to write, uh, thank you for all the nice compliments you paid to my daughter in your last letter. But it's about time you told Luigi straight out what do you want, that he should have married my Rosa. If not, uh, you're going to have a permanent guest in your house, your son or Luigi. Uh, Rosa, after that, to put a big expectation point. <laughs> Papa, you mean exclamation point. I mean exploitation, because that's what's going to happen to him. <laughs> now, go on. Mrs. Bosco, you've taken away the best years from my daughter's life because soon it's going to be too late and she's not going to be legible. Right to now, <laughs> right to now, she's still in her 20s. But, Papa, I'm going to be 30 next week. <laughs> Who's asking you? <laughs> Look at the department stores. If they want to sell something for $30, they charge it $29.99. Why? Because it don't sound like it's in the 30s. Rose, as long as you're 29 and 99 and 100 years old, you're still in your 20s. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. Rose is still a 20. She's still a very beautiful. Papa? I'm way ahead of you, Rosa. I know. I'm going to send her some baby pictures here. <laughs> Easy to what I always carry in my wallet. You on the bare rug. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, look at that a pitch. I should have known then what was going to happen. <laughs> Only four weeks old already, you covered up the whole rug. <laughs> I put that in the envelope and I had this. Uh, so, Mrs. Abasco, if you know Sammy, you, Luigi, and mail a letter by the end of the week saying to Mara Rosa, back, he's going on the next boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rosa, soon you're going to be a little bride. <laughs> Maybe you're going to name her the first one after me, eh? <laughs> the first what, Papa? Oh, shut up, you face. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Basco? You haven't been paying attention to class all evening. Don't you feel well? Well, uh, Miss Bolling... I'm a feeling well, but my mom, she's got a headache. That makes Luigi sick by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. What's the matter with you, mama? Something serious? Well, my mom wants me to get married so much, she's got a headache. Mm. Uh-huh, now I see it. She wants you should get married and you should get the headache. <laughs> yeah, but worst of all, Pasquale is trying to tell me she wants me only to marry Rosie. Himmel, that ain't headaches. That's the DDT. <laughs> oh, stop it, Schultz. You are not helping Luigi one my oath. Stop with that kind of talk. Luigi, after all, you only got one mom and if oh, that's Oh, Mr. Howitz, I don't think his mother necessarily wants him to marry Rosa. I'm sure another fine girl would make Mrs. Basco very happy. It would make Mr. Basco overjoyed. Yeah, but I, I, I'm sure too, Miss Bolling. But I'm a think it's too late. Pasquale is doing something mean to scare my mama, I'm sure. Oh, Luigi, if you got married to another girl, then Pasquale could do nothing. Yeah, but what am I going to find another girl? <laughs> but that's easy, Luigi. Ask any married man. He'll give you his. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you're not helping Mr. Basco one bit. Luigi, I got a wonderful idea. I got a friend who met a beautiful girl through a marriage broker. Marriage broker, what's yeah. that? That's a mother-in-law with an office. <laughs> Ach, Luigi, smile. I'm only fooling. A marriage broker is a fellow who gets people together. Uh, then what's to happen? Well, if they hit it off, they get married. Yeah, then they get married and they hit each other. Schultz, <laughs> I don't think that's such good advice. And Luigi is desperate looking for a solution. Uh, Luigi, uh, I think going to a marriage broker would be real good for you. And so do I, Mr. Basco. Well, then my man is a made-up of friends. He's a good for my mom, he's a good for me. Now, sure, Luigi, go ahead. Go to the marriage broker. What can happen? Can you get married and lose your independence? Can you start to live with a bunch of kids and a dozen relatives? Can you be afraid to keep a penny in your own pocket or your wife will claim you're a swindler? Schultz, can that happen? I don't know, Luigi. Just because it happened to me doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. Before we return to Life with Luigi, I'd like to suggest an easy, inexpensive way to make your daily work more pleasant. Every time you want a refreshing little lift, chew a stick of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. The fresh, lively, real spearmint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, and refreshes your taste. Then, too, the good, steady chewing action sort of picks you up, helps keep you feeling alert and on your toes. So always keep a package of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum handy at your job and enjoy some pleasant chewing while you work. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum tonight or tomorrow morning. And now let's return to Luigi as he writes his letter to his Mama Basco in it. So, Mamma Mia, if it's going to make you feel better, I'm going to find myself a wife. Then a wife is going to be like aspirin and make your headaches go away. I hope my friends is a give me a card, the marriage broker, who's a bringing younger people together. 
How am I going to ask her this marriage broker? He should have find me a nice wife with the kids. So we can be married and you can become a grandmama at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> also, mamma mia, so Pasquale shouldn't get married and do something wrong. I'm going to slide the marriage broker's card under his door. I know he's not going to use it now, but when he finds out I'm getting married, then he can bring a rose there to find a husband. Rosa, stop crying. Can I help if there's no answer from Luigi's mama and the mayor? Wait, please, stop crying, Rosa. I got a big idea. I got a two ways to get a Luigi. I got to kill a one bird with a two stones. <laughs> what are you going to do, Papa? A yeah, marriage broker slipped the card into my door today. We're going to get down there and we're going to find a husband. And for double protection, we're sending Luigi's mama a cable. A cable? Yeah, I'm going to give you a birthday party. And the night of your birthday, we're going to demand she cable back to Luigi to marry Rosa. Then both the husbands are going to be at your birthday... If the cable comes, you can pick out who you want. <laughs> you happy, my little girl? <laughs> Mr. Pasquale, will you please go into that office where Mr. Fuller will talk to you? Uh, young it. lady, will you wait in this little ante room? Mr. Fuller likes to talk to the parents first. Certainly. Well, how do you do, sir? Come right in. Now, Mr. Pasquale, don't be worried. They say marriage is a maid in heaven. Well, if they are, then I must be St. Peter. <laughs> uh, uh, look, Mr. Peter, uh, what... <laughs> what can you do for my daughter? In due time. In due time, first a few things I'd like to know confidentially. Uh, how uh, attractive is she? Uh, there's a $5,000 that comes with her. Oh, very nice. Of course, you realize in these inflationary times, 5,000 isn't as good looking as it once was. <laughs> to me, it's always a look pretty. <laughs> well put, well put. Now, um, how much does she weigh? You have to ask that question? Well, if I don't, the prospective groom will. How much does she weigh? Uh, make that a $10,000. What a beautiful figure. <laughs> Suppose we call your daughter in, huh? Sure, sure. Rosa! 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 Coming, Papa! <laughs> this is your daughter? Uh-huh. You better make it 15000 <laughs> I'll make it anything. Rosa, Mr. Fuller's the man who's going to marry you. Oh, Mr. Fuller! This is so funny! No, 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 no. Not, not me, Miss Rosa. I'm going to find some... Oh, good. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Mr. yes. Mr. Fuller, the gentleman who called you some time ago and made an appointment. Oh, yes, yes. Send him in. I believe I may have somebody for you. This party seems to be in a hurry. Now, you go back to the other room and wait till I call you. All right, all right. But make it as cheap as possible. Yes. I hope 15000 will be enough of a reward. I mean a dowry. Oh, come in. Uh, hello. Hello. How do you do? I'm a Luigi Basco. You're Luigi Basco? Yes, sir. I think I can do it for 10000 <laughs> huh? Nothing, nothing. Now, um... <laughs> Uh, you want a wife, I take it. Huh? You want a wife, I take it. I'm an Ogata, how you gonna take? <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to swing this for five. <laughs> Mr. Basco, uh, how much money do you have? Well, uh, are you mean uh, right now in uh, my pocket? Well, I mean your savings, real estate, stocks, bonds, securities. All together? Huh? Yes. How much are you worth all together? Wait, I'm looking in my pocket. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, Mr. Basco, I hope you realize that finding a wife may be difficult for you. Well, uh, that's uh, the big problem. Uh, yes, but finding it... a different... Well, I'm realizing. Yes, but it so happens that you may have come at an extremely fortunate time. Tell me, do you have any particular type of girl in mind? Well, uh, well, uh, no particular type, uh... I'm like a nice girl. Who's a citizen? Who can cook? Dance good? Help me take care of my shop? Have a nice education? And a pleasure, mister. I'm a hope that she's a look nice. Yes, well, of course. Now tell me, um, do you like a girl who's overweight? Well, 
Oh, wait. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think is, uh, is all the way? I asked you first. <laughs> What do you think is overweight? Well, never mind. By a remarkable coincidence, my friend, someone came in who was looking for just somebody like you. Huh? Now, I'll open the door. Uh-huh. You may come in now. <laughs> she sounds like a opera singer. That's what I guess is really overweight. Now, listen to Luigi. Luigi. <laughs> You gotta marry Rosa because that's the water your mama wants. That's gonna cure her headaches, huh? Is that a right to my son? Yeah, but if I study my mama's they never told me I'm gonna marry Rosa. Well, she's a goner. What? That's a right. The two days from now on Rosa's birthday, you're gonna get a cable. If she says marry Rosa, will you? But my mama want to say that. But if she does, remember her headaches. All right, Pasquale, but only if she's sending me such a cable. Good, Luigi, that's a bargain. Invite all your friends to the party. If the cable comes, I make the announcement. If not, then we forget it. What do you say, my son? All right, the Papa. <laughs> Party. Pasquale, you deserve credit. When you make a birthday party, you make a birthday party. <laughs> Tonight, the sky is the limit, Horowitz. Ah. Champagne is flowing like a beer. Yeah, and it tastes the same. <laughs> Any you satisfied, Mr. Delicate Pestin, the man? Can't you take a choke, Pasquale? Congratulations on your daughter's birthday. All right, thank you, Schultz. But who knows? Maybe you'll be able to congratulate her on something else. Something else? What's that? <laughs> you find out. <laughs> well, I gotta go and mingle. <laughs> when I hear him laugh like that, I know he's got something up his sleeve. And I'm afraid it's a marriage license. <laughs> Look at Luigi, the way he is acting. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, no, Luigi, you, 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 cheer up. Give us this is a party. By young Benjamin, you got that jolly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Luigi, did you go to that place the other day? You know where? I'm a went to Horowitz. And did they find you a you know what? That's right. And the you know what is the you know who? What? <laughs> Himmel, it is. <laughs> it's a long story, sure. Some went to the marriage of Broca, some I shouldn't have married us. But if Pasquale went there to Rosa, she shouldn't have married me. So when I'm open up at the door, I have to come to Rosa and I'm her husband. <laughs> oh, that scheming Pasquale, has he got you for shimmers? <laughs> No, no, sure, sir. He's not. I'm, I'm only agreed to one thing. That's it. For my mom is to send me a cable here tonight to marry Rosa. Then I'm a do it. Otherwise, no. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's rush the party. Hey, Pasquale, let's cut the cake. Yeah, yeah, come, come on, cut the cake. Wait a minute. Not so fast. Oh. First, I've got to make a speech. Oh. Tonight, my little Rosa goes from one station to another station. And before she makes it a step from the one station to the other station, I'm... Pasquale, please, give her the transfer and let us eat the cake. <laughs> Nobody's asked you, Schultz. As I look on the three candles of the cake, I wonder if you peoples know what this means. You're sure you are too cheap to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> All quiet, Mr. Delicatessen, the man. Papa, shall I blow out the candles? Yeah, that's a good idea. Here, I, I light them. Well, here I go. Stand back, everybody. Last year she blew everybody out of the store. <laughs> so, I had enough from you. I, I had enough from you. You're just trying to stall everything, so maybe a cable should come. Well, it ain't coming, see? Uh, pardon me. Is there a Mr. Basco here? Yes, I'm Mr. Basco here. Uh, will you sign here, please? A cable from Italy. Huh? Oh. <laughs> so is it not come, eh? Well, who's the laugh from the other side of their nose now? <laughs> All right, Luigi, open the cable, read the good news. All right, the Pasquale. I'm watching it. 
Uh, Pasquale, your plan is out. I'm going to have to marry Rosa. What? That cable that couldn't be from you, Mama. She would do anything not to have you deported. All right, here it is. Read it yourself. What are you talking about? Let me see. Hey, look, it says, Dear Son Luigi. Stop. Marry Rosa. Oh, no, Pasquale. I'm going to read it for you. Dear Son Luigi, stop, Mary Rosa. <laughs> That's just what I'm going to do. Stop. Luigi, my son. Goodbye, Papa. So, Mamma Mia, I'm glad you sent that cable in the time. Now that I'm receiving your order letter and see how Pasquale is trying to scare you, I'm going to say, Mamma Mia, don't worry about the Pasquale. I'm not going to get married at all. Pasquale says that I must get married. I'm going to say I don't think it's so good. Of course, marriage is nice, but I'm going to take a lesson from my country. If this country can stay free... So can your Luigi. <laughs> your loving son, Luigi Bosco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is just about the perfect taste treat to enjoy between your meals. It isn't rich, it isn't heavy, yet it does satisfy that little hankering you get for something good to chew on. A stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is chock full of delicious, long-lasting, real spearmint flavor. And you can chew and enjoy it for as long as you want. So keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy all the time. Enjoy it often between meals. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Love Gluskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. It would be tough enough to be a child in Europe or Asia today if all you had to contend with was the battle to find a place to live among the ruins or to locate your missing family. But if, on top of all of this, you were cold and hungry as well, well, then the battle wouldn't seem worth the effort. Pardon me. Thousands of children today are trying to survive under these conditions. Food has become the most important thing in their lives. It's hard to keep going when you're hungry. And low-cost care food packages are known throughout Europe and Asia. The biggest thrill in the life of a child or of a family is to receive a care food package from some kind friend in America. Care standard food package for $10 contains 24 pounds of high-protein foods so necessary to supplement the austerity diets overseas. Care's baby food package is filled with the essential food and equipment for babies and young children, and that also is only $10. On all care packages... Delivery is guaranteed. So order a care package today from CARE, C-A-R-E, that's CARE, Los Angeles, or CARE, New York. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>